Bringing 262 Heavy, wind calm, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, caution weight turbulence, previous departure, Heavy uh, 777. Welcome to Valdosta, Georgia, and Moody Air Force Base. Some of you are going to be disappointed with this aircraft. Some of you are going to be happy I'm doing this aircraft. This is the only one I could find. So, yes, you know, because of the video title, we are doing the A-10 Warthog. Or Thunderbolt 2 is its technical real name. Warthog is only a nickname that they gave because, well, it's bloody ugly. But it's so powerful. <laughs> Um, a first problem I noticed when I got into this, aside from the fact there's no virtual cockpit, is watch what happens when I go to the tower view. See it jump? If I go back here, hop, 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 it has this weird behavior, and I, I can't figure out the behavior. When I go in and out of the aircraft, it has this hopping thing going on. All right, let's let's get ourselves uh, let's get ourselves a cockpit. There we go, there's a cockpit for us. That's... that's... okay, well... Mm. Yeah... kind of a goofy cockpit. Anyway... A-10. It's kind of a distinctive airframe. I mean, that there's very few airframes that look quite as ugly and menacing at the same time. And it's all menacing because of that cannon sticking out of that shark's mouth up there. The entire airframe is built around the GAU-8 Avenger. Sort of like the, the P-39, which is built around the, the Oldsmobile cannon from World War II. And this was built around the GAU-8. That is the heaviest gun ever placed on an aircraft to date. When you consider the barrel the Gatling, and the ammo drum. All of it. Heaviest to date. This aircraft also has over 1,200 pounds of armor plating, including a titanium tub where the pilot sits. It is highly maneuverable at low speed due to the large wing area, way more wing than this aircraft really needs, high aspect ratio, and large ailerons. In fact, those ailerons... Those are not quite the full length of those ailerons. Those ailerons should be bigger than that. But they're not. Anyway. We have flaps. That's good. We probably won't need them here at Moody. We have plenty of, of runway for us. The engines are mounted up high. One, to protect them from flak. And two, because then they exhaust over the tail, allowing the the uh, the heat to cool a little bit also makes the A-10 less susceptible to ground uh, SAMs that are infrared. The skin panels of the A-10 are machined skin panels with stringers integrated into them. What does that mean? Well, one, there's the skin is not load bearing, meaning it's very easy to repair in the field. It's also the, the reason, f there was also a, a very good reason for this, uh, what I guess you can call the, the uh, wheel pod here, so that when she bellies in, it doesn't do as much damage to her belly so they can get her back into the field quicker. This aircraft can survive a direct hit from a 23mm armor-piercing high-explosive round. It is designed to fly with one engine, one tail, one elevator, and half a wing. Or, or uh, one, well, let me rephrase that. One engine, one tail, one elevator, and missing half of its wing. I mean, you don't have half a wing, but you're still going to fly. Wonderful. All right, let's get this bird in the air. Stop hopping, hoppy thing. Stop it. Full throttle. We're powered by two General Electric TF-34 GE 100As, producing 9,065 pounds of thrust each. When clean, meaning nothing on board, we can make 439 miles per hour at sea level. Not the fastest plane out there, but was never intended to be a fast plane. Whoa! Whoa!
There we go. <laughs> uh, I might fly in this mode, because it's probably easier to fly out in. Uh, okay. Now that big... What is happening to my HUD up there? Wow. And this was the only freeware one I could find. So... <laughs> <laughs> My heads-up display is knackered. That's nice. Ugh. Anyway. Um, so the GAU-8 up front fires depleted uranium armor-piercing shells at 3,900 rounds per minute. It takes a half second to spool up to full speed. Just sick. <laughs> you don't want that thing shooting at you, that's for sure. Also, it's extremely accurate. In fact, that cannon, in flight, with a decent pilot, can place 80% of its rounds within a 40-foot diameter circle at 4,000 feet. That's just nuts! There's our runway. Alright, we're gonna go back this way. So you can ignore the fact my HUD is all knackered up. Go this way. Are you spooling down, fan? You are good. Alright. Now, the Air Force is considering replacing the A-10. Its airframe is design has been re-engineered enough to last till 2040. But the Air Force is talking about replacing it with the F-35. Um, some people are pointing out that that is silly because they built this whole aircraft because fighter aircraft like the F-35 were incapable of of performing the close air support role for which the A-10 is designed. And also, can you imagine? You don't have you don't have that big cannon up front. In fact, soldiers on the ground, when they when they want when they're dealing with enemies and they're calling for the A-10, it's called going ugly early. You go ugly early, you call the A-10, blow the enemy up, and then you mop up the mess later with little bitty doggy bags for the parts of the enemy, I guess. Now, not just the Air Force is going to be flying these A-10s. The National Science Foundation has issued a grant to modify an A-10 to fly into extreme weather conditions to study high altitude weather. And when we're talking extreme weather conditions, the reason they want the A-10 is for the armor because they want to be able to fly it into 200 mile per hour hailstorms. So there, 1,200 pounds of armor, the ability to fly missing most of the parts of your aircraft, sort of makes sense. <laughs> Alright, where's the runway? Runway, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, crap. And where's runway? Runway. Um, there you are. Okay. Throttle down. Well, this is gonna be another one of those fun landings. All right. Okay. Wheels are down. Oh, look at us! Here we come. In the ugliest aircraft ever. That's not true. There are uglier out there. In addition to our big cannon up front, we of course have 11 hard points that can carry up to 16,000 pounds of Sink rate. things that make you go boom. Pull up. Be it Pull bombs, up. be it Pull Maverick up. missiles, which is pretty standard. Um, the Pull Maverick up. missile. Be quiet, talky guy. I actually sort of Pull know what I'm up. doing here. No, I'm just laughing because you're like, no, you don't know what you're doing, you idiot. Sink rate. Come on. Come on. You can touch down. Alright. Put these engines into reverse. No, I can't. We are going really, really fast. Oh, but we'll make it. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, we have. I think we have room. I can't tell because of the stupid cockpit. 
Oh, I should. I could look down there at that little screen from my f something or another. Ah, oh, we made it. All right, let's put the parking brake on. On the heck was that? I don't know. All right, so should we know what shift one is? Shift two, radio three, GPS four. That's it. Okay, not a heck of a lot. Let's open our cockpit. Woo! Oh, and look, we. Oh no, we don't have a door. A, a ladder. Okay. Um, oh look, the celerons. So the split ailerons. So we have both ailerons and decelerons. And decelerons are. See, so you can. I can still move them, but they become my air brakes as well. Is that not amazing? <laughs> anyway. All right. So this A10. Um, the links down below. <laughs> no, I. I don't like it. Um, I wish it was nicer. I really do. The payware one that's out there is uh, from Iris Simulations. Just a phenomenal looking model. Phenomenal looking aircraft. Be quiet engines. Is that why you were doing the bouncing thing? Silly plane. Anyway, um, so the Iris Simulation payware one, I think it's worth it to get a payware one of these from somebody like Iris. They're a very good company. This one, no. Not even. I don't like the fact it bounces when I shift. I, I just... No. It, but I've done an A-10 for you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. I did land it, despite going in at an, a ridiculous angle of attack on landing. Um, but that's more down to the fact that it's a close air support aircraft capable of blowing tanks to kingdom come. So, until next time, Spendair Tubbers. I actually landed a military jet for a change. Until next time, bye.